Party full timer from in the East Midlands from Leicester and a member of the National Committee. And she's going to be speaking for about half an hour on the life and times and ideas of Leon Trotsky. Over to you, Tessa. So on the 20th of August 1940, Leon Trotsky was murdered by an agent of Stalin, Ramon Makada. Um, and as Tiki uh, correctly said, this month marks the 80th anniversary of that assassination. Now, revolutionary anniversaries cause us to recall the lessons of workers' history and class struggle. And in the case of Trotsky, he causes us to remember not just one lesson, but the lessons of his entire life participating in revolutionary struggles. Experiences not only of the revolution in Russia in 1917, but vicely of the subsequent negation of that upheaval with, by Stalin and Stalinism, as well as the effects on movements around the world um, that Stalinism had in distorting the uh, roots that struggle and workers' revolutionary movements developed. And we in the Socialist Party call ourselves Trotskyists, not because we idolise or romanticise Trotsky the man, but because his ideas, his analysis and the advancement of revolutionary thought um, that he represents and his body of work and life represent offer the political tools that we need today to fight for socialism. The ideas of permanent revolution, the transitional methods combined in an even development, the role of leadership, analysis of Stalinism and the failures of class struggle um, and of the leaderships of class, uh, class struggle subsequent to the Russian Revolution. And this is why we're having the theme of, uh, of, of Trotsky's life for Arcada School with workshops exploring a range of Trotsky's ideas so that by developing our understanding of his ideas we can explore and better understand our role in building workers' movements and why it is key that we strive um, to become uh, the leadership of our time as Trotsky was um, of his, because we understand the key role that leadership plays, um, that correct political leadership plays, um, and the devastating consequences of abandoning working class to the blind alleys of uh, incorrect leadership. So whenever workers' history uh, and events are raised in, uh, in capitalist media, uh, they get misrepresented, they get slated in order to undermine the potential popularity for, for these ideas. Um, but given the ability of angry workers and youth to see through the lies of big business media, it actually has the opposite effect uh, of, of, of searching out for these ideas. Um, and we can see that in the way that socialism was used as a smear um, to undermine Corbyn, but caused a whole generation, a whole layer of young people to go out and fight to learn about socialism. So we have to learn the real history in order to be able to counter these arguments and also to be able to find and catch the radicalised layers of youth and workers searching for an alternative, searching for what Trotsky's ideas truly represented. So Trotsky's ideas were so feared that not only um, was he expelled from Russia, um, but also the entire world um, would not house Trotsky. Um, and eventually he had to move from country to country before being permitted residence in Mexico. But even then, that expulsion was not enough for Stalin. He had to be stopped, he had to be killed. Um, because of the danger that his ideas represented um, to Stalin uh, and his uh, control and support in Russia. So Stalin killed all who remembered the Russian Revolution, not only members of the left opposition of the opponents of Stalin, but even went so far as killing his own supporters who still remembered um, and pa had participated in the, the revolution itself because of the continuation of those ideas and of the correct um, analysis and, and knowledge of events threatened um, Stalin's control 
um, and support. And so that is what's, what the, the fear of the ideas and um, how important they were. But it was not only Stalin who uh, celebrated the death of Trotsky, it was every capitalist uh, government in the world who understood that his ideas, his correct analysis was not only a danger um, to the authoritarian dictatorship um, in Russia, but also to capitalist governments around the world that could see their workers won um, to, to revolutionary ideas. Um, and so even Churchill uh, went on record to congratulate Stalin on the murder of Trotsky. And um, completely ironically, both Trotsky and Lenin are represented in, in the media as, uh, as, as having played an individual role, having been huge egotists who only sought power for themselves um, and in that way uh, misportray uh, both Lenin and Stalin as uh, people who had they not died would have inevitably become like Stalin um, in an attempt to show that the, the horrors of Stalinism were uh, an inherent outcome from the Russian Revolution. But the reality is that these men made unbelievably enormous sacrifices in order to carry out their work, in order to play their role in the workers' movement. Not only was Trotsky assassinated, but his son before him uh, was also murdered and his daughter committed suicide. And so when we think of Trotsky, this is somebody who literally lost his family through his involvement with the revolution. But well, if by killing Trotsky, Stalin and the capitalists thought that they could destroy his ideas, um, then they have been profoundly mistaken um, because Trotsky fundamentally understood the need for those ideas for future generations, for those lessons um, to be understood and discussed um, and, and, uh, and processed by, by the future workers, um, socialists um, and Marxists and so on. So that is why he wrote, he was such a prof prolific writer. I think that if all his works were taken together, there's at almost 50 volumes. Um, and so that is why we play an emphasis on, on reading the works, not only of Trotsky, but of other um, important Marxists and revolutionaries. Um, and because Trotsky understood the importance of the legacy of these ideas. Um, he wrote more than any other um, revolutionary in living memory, I believe. So um, also to counter the idea that Trotsky was uh, just an egotist on the lookout uh, for power for himself, uh, it's not um, well known, but Trotsky was actually offered leadership um, of uh, of Russia, of the, the Communist Party, by Antonov Osienko, who was the chief commissar um, of the Red Army in the 1920s, um, after, uh, after replacing Trotsky as the leader of the Red Army. Um, and in that time, Trotsky enjoyed immense authority, greater authority um, than Stalin, um, not only amongst the ranks of the Red Army, but, but the upper echelons of officers as well, who had fought alongside him in the Civil War and um, been under his command in the defeating of the, of the, 22, the 21 invading uh, armies of imperialism, who after um, the, the ending of the First World War, um, turned to look to Russia um, to um, defeat the revolution sh through fear that it would spread um, to the working classes of other countries. But Trotsky understood that by accepting power um, from the head of the, of the Red Army, from the military, rather than um, from the, the Russian workers through the democratic accountability of, of the Soviets um, and uh, the, the new emerging worker state, that he would invariably become um, a prisoner of a worse military bureaucracy um, than what the, the, the kind of role of the, um, that Stalin was playing in the rising uh, bureaucratic clique at the time. 
Um, and he understood that this process was inevitable because of the isolation of the Russian Revolution, because um, in overthrowing its, its capitalist class and its capitalist state, um, it had not been joined by other um, stronger, more advanced capitalist countries like Germany uh, following suit that could support um, the, the underdeveloped um, uh, means of production uh, within uh, Russia, which was not able to sustain itself. Um, and really because Trotsky understood the, the necessity of um, the spread of the revolution of, of an internationalist approach um, and the impossibility of, of socialism as an island, of socialism in one country. He understood that it is not through manoeuvres and the development of, of, of cliques or, or coups um, that socialism and the forces of Marxism can grow. It's only by basing ourselves on the consciousness of the working class, um, uh, of its uh, political understanding at each stage of events, and attempting to take um, the movement forward by using a clear program um, and slogans and organisation um, that, that socialism and Marxism can genuinely uh, flourish. Um, but even though the fact that we celebrate Trotsky um, and his life because of his ideas, um, we should be careful that we don't conflate that with, with any kind of hero worship or putting on a pedestal. Um, Trotsky was a human, he was not infallible and he did make mistakes. But the most important thing we can learn from that is um, his, his willingness uh, and in fact determination and not only of Trotsky, but of Lenin as well, to own up um, to mistakes, to acknowledge them, because of the understanding that only by having a, an accurate material uh, understanding, um, not only of the world around us, but of, um, of, of the role individuals, uh, particularly the role of individual leaders play, um, that we can take the movement forwards. He acknowledged his mistakes, um, which was, again, completely opposite to Stalin, who had to have all evidence of any uh, counter uh, opinions um, or undermining of his theoretical ideas uh, removed from society. Um, but Trotsky did make mistakes, for example, in the um, split uh, between um, the, the Bolsheviks and the, member, and the Mensheviks, um, uh, that was around the, the role of the Revolutionary Party, where Lenin understood the way a, a revolutionary party needed to be organised. Um, Trotsky at the time had not yet uh, reached the conclusions of, of the, the need for uh, the party to be organised along revolutionary lines, um, but, uh, and was later won to the side of the Bolsheviks, but for a long time uh, remained in between the two believing there needs to be a reconciliation with the reformist ideas of the Mensheviks uh, with the revolutionary ideas of, of the Bolsheviks. Um, but he um, was more, it's important to point out that he was more correct um, and sometimes spectacularly so on the major issues which confronted the workers' movement in his day. Um, and his colossal contribution um, through his uh, analysis and dissection of, of fascism uh, and the process of fascism's development in the 1930s uh, and 20s, um, even then he uh, would, would openly correct the um, earlier comments he made uh, when it was a new phenomena, accepting um, that there was a difference between a fascist regime and the Bonapartist regime, um, which still um, depended on uh, the popular vote uh, for some of its uh, power, and in doing so, uh, did not fully smash the workers' organisations and, and democratic rights uh, in order to, to, to gain power in the way that fascism did. Um, and so Trotsky accepted that and, and recognised it in order to further develop uh, the, the understanding of fascism necessary in order to be able to, to plot a route to fight it. 
So what role did, did Trotsky play within the 1917 revolution itself, um, which we should acknowledge um, at, that to this day is the single greatest event uh, in the development of human history. And Trotsky, through his participation in the workers' movement in Russia, he went to prison for his ideas, for the active role he was playing in the movement. Um, and whilst in prison, he read um, studiously the, the, the works of Marx and Engels, and he based himself on those ideas um, in the same way that we base ourselves to not only on the ideas of Lenin and Trotsky, but on the ideas of, of Marx and Engels before them. Um, because in reality, there is no separation between um, those ideas and the ideas of Trotsky and Lenin in reality represent the taking forwards and testing of Marxist ideas against uh, reality. Um, and our ideas are also, we don't see them as separate from the ideas of, of those who've led struggle who've gone before us, but merely the kind of logical continuation um, of, of the, those ideas and our analysis of, of processes of capitalism subsequent to that. So Trotsky became a, a leader of the Bolshevik party um, a lot, uh, alongside Lenin and developed the theory of permanent revolution, which I won't describe in detail because obviously there is a workshop uh, later should, should comrades wish to go. But for those who maybe uh, can't decide uh, between workshops, um, it was essential to the, the success of the Russian Revolution for Trotsky to be able to explain why it was possible for Russia as an economically and industrially underdeveloped um, country, very similarly to the neo-colonial world today, where there was uh, still a, um, the vestiges of, of Tsarism and of a, a peasantry and an aristocracy and so on. Uh, where 80% of the population was still uh, tied to the land, still peasant-based. How could uh, a socialist revolution um, based around the role of the working class and their relationship to the means of production, how could uh, that take place in a country that was so um, underdeveloped uh, and uh, industrially backwards? Um, and this um, theory was not only vital for, uh, for the movement and the development of the movement in Russia, but also uh, later under Stalinism, uh, there was a real attempt to distort how um, socialism can be won in underdeveloped countries by putting forward a two stages theory, um, which meant um, that um, in countries where the, 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 the the sharing out of the land, the, the tasks, the historic tasks of capitalism to introduce parliamentary democracy had not been achieved uh, despite um, the arrival of capitalism. Um, Stalin argued that there needed to be first a bourgeois revolution to overthrow the remaining elements of feudalism before there could be a socialist revolution to overthrow capitalism. Um, and by not understanding the need to fight for socialist uh, uh, demands and a socialist program and have the working class as the leadership of any movement not only to, to, to fully realise the gains um, and the historic tasks um, of, of democracy under capitalism but also to realise um, the socialist um, ending of a class-based society and sharing out of the wealth in society. Um, and um, so Trotsky was be able to, to explain why that was not the case and why um, Stalin was, was misrepresenting and distorting um, the, the genuine Marxist understanding of how uh, the revolution would proceed. Um, he was chair of the, of the Petrograd Soviet, um, which was an incredibly important position, elected position um, as the capital of, of Russia. And as I said earlier in the lead off, he was the chair of, uh, he was the leader of the Red Army um, and played an absolutely essential role, not only in, in achieving the revolution, but also in defending the revolution in the immediate um, preciding um, subsequent period. 
from the invading uh, armies, not only of Russia's capitalist class in the White Guards, but of the 21 uh, invading imperialist armies of other capitalist states as well. So Trotsky opposed Stalin, not only in words, but in deeds. Um, sometimes it's presented that Stalinism just was allowed to ride roughshod um, with no opposition, uh, with no fight back from within the Bolshevik party. But actually um, Trotsky became the leader of the left opposition within uh, the Bolshevik party, opposing um, Stalin um, publicly and vocally. Um, and again, this represents the huge risk taken by himself and the others that stood up to Stalin in that um, all of um, all of those um, that opposed Stalin were either executed as part of the Moscow show trials, um, assassinated or exiled to, to you know, the steppe, to Siberia. Um, it really took a huge amount of courage um, to be able to do that and see the necessity to do that um, and have the confidence in ideas to be willing to do that. Um, and Trotsky also developed and was key in developing um, the transitional program, um, which again, there will be a workshop discussing those ideas, um, discussing the way that in a new period, um, the those uh, of the revolutionary um, socialist ideas of Marxist ideas um, that were left after um, the, uh, the the defeat of Stalinism uh, and uh, foreseeing the events of World War II, how uh, a program would need to change and what were the key ideas um, the, the 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 key methods. Uh, of revolutionary socialists to be able to win the working masses um, to our to our banner to our side, not only in broad uh, movements but also never um, separating uh, our demands um, for what is immediately necessary as um, part of the stepping stone to socialism and as a bridge to the need for socialism. Um, and he was also one of the founding uh, members of the Fourth International, understanding the need um, for continuation of, of workers and uh, workers being organised not only in the labour movement but in a revolutionary party to be able to continue discussion of those ideas um, and, and oppose Stalinism. Um, and also understanding um the the need for internationalism as i said before um about the in um ability of, of socialism to exist in one country as stalin um and the using the authority of them the authority uh, and weight of, of the success of the russian revolution to to misdirect workers around the world Trotsky reached out to groups of workers in, in the US, in France and around the world um, and was an active participant in, in building socialist ideas and the worker struggle um, throughout the whole course of his life, not just during the Russian Revolution. Um, and he also analysed the movements um, that grew up in China, in Germany, in France and in Spain um, and was able to um, to, to fight for the, the direction for those movements to go in, even given the, um, the, the sort of incredible lack of information of not being on the ground, still being able to an analyse from afar, um, but also being able to point out the, um, the, the mistakes being made um, by, by the leaderships of those um, movements, but also by um, the leadership of Stalinism uh, and its sort of disproportionate influence that it then had in the subsequent um, movements uh, around the world. Um, so Trotsky, um, Trotsky's ideas, one of the things that we need to discuss is not only uh, why were they important at the time, but why are they important for us to discuss today? How do we make them relevant today? How do we discuss the practical implications and application of Trotsky's method and ideas. 
the CWI, which, you know, the Committee for a Workers International, which the Socialist Party is um, a, a, a part of, um, for example, did fall back in the 90s after the collapse of Stalinism, um, and particularly with the, the move um, and the, the liquidation of the planned economy uh, in Stalinist countries. Um, and it could not be otherwise at the time. There was, there was no uh, force on the left that could withstand um, the, the throwback in consciousness that happened as a result of the collapse of Stalinism and the, the proper propaganda that, that um, flowed from the capitalist institutions uh, following that fall. It's vital for us to understand and it, for, at the time and to be able to withstand um, that, that backlash in, in consciousness in the 90s in order for us to be able to safeguard socialist ideas um, and, and build, continue the building of our party um, in preparation for future changes, for, for, for massive future changes in consciousness um, and an understanding for the need for a revolutionary party and the, uh, the role of leadership in successful struggle for socialism. Trotsky's ideas, um, also particularly the idea of the permanent revolution, retains its validity for countries in the neo-colonial world, as I mentioned before. Um, and that this holds that the democratic revolution in the modern era cannot be carried through by the capitalists. The tasks of land reform, as I said, real parliament, democracy, freedom, um, as well as the economic um, and, and social and political shackles of, of capitalism and imperialism that exist side by side, these are impossible for the weak ruling classes um, to, to deliver and, in, and, and all these struggles must be tied to the need for socialism. So the contribution, just to, to, to sum up, the contribution of Trotsky's ideas to the struggle for socialism in the 21st century cannot be overemphasized. The Socialist Party and the CWI um, have managed to maintain the, the democratic socialist banner of Trotsky um, and, and the workers' um, movement through to today and that is not without, with, uh, without experiencing splits um, uh, as we did last year, um, either you know, on an opportunist basis or ultra left basis. And this is something, the, the process of, of testing our ideas and experiencing um, sort of splits and sharp arguments is not unusual in, in the period that we're going through and have been through. Um, because that was the same, that process was the same in, in Russia. Lenin and Trotsky engaged in similar struggles between 1907 and 1911. Um, but inevitably, as we foresaw, as our party foresaw, capitalism did break down and has ushered in a, a new period of political turmoil and economic turmoil. And political struggle um, is not just during the, the high tides of the workers' movement, um, but also during periods of retreat um, and defence of the ideas. It is necessary in order to prepare for um, the, the massive uh, events of the future. We understand as Marxists that resistance and a fight back against capitalism is inevitable, but by itself, understanding that struggle is inevitable is not enough. We also need a clear programme clear policy and tactical improvisation, clear slogans at each stage of the struggle. Um, and this is what Trotsky underlined again and again, and why we need to study his ideas and what we fight for today. Thank you.